I'd like to say good afternoon to all the sisters and brothers here at the House of Jacob and welcome to any visitors we may have. As always, it's a pleasure to stand before you this day. You know, the Lord commanded in his holy word that we should keep the Sabbath day and have a holy gathering on, it, on this day, and that's what we do here. And we are called the House of Jacob Bible Study Class because that's what we do here. We study the Bible. Because the Bible is there to get us words of sal to give us words of salvation. In other words, everything we need to live forever is inside the Word of God. And that is what we preach here, the Word of God. I'm not going to give you my words or nobody else's words. The only way you're going to get saved or get any kind of salvation is from the Word of God. And that is of the truth. Today, sisters and brothers, we're going to deal with a lesson I titled, Children of God, Natural to Spiritual. Because our main goal, sisters and brothers, is to be a child of God. And to be a child of God, you have to act and conduct yourself a certain way. The Lord left his holy word here to show us how we must live in this present time until he comes, till he returns. So what we're going to deal with is, we're going to deal with this children of God, natural and spiritual. And the reason I chose this lesson because I heard a brother talk about a preacher, which we're going to read this first uh, scripture in Genesis, saying where angels laid with man, women. We're going to show you, first of all, that can simply cannot happen. And we're going to show you what that sons of the daughter of the men laying with the sons of God is all about. We're going to start this lesson off in Genesis, the sixth chapter. Genesis six. Y'all hold on. I'm missing something. Please forgive me. All right, we ready to roll now. <laughs> All right, we're going to start this off in Genesis 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Genesis 6 and 1. Genesis 6 and 1. When you get there, Brother Ben and I, go ahead and read. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters were born, and daughters were born unto them. Now, this is some thousand, about a thousand years after Adam was born, after the Lord created man. Now, during that thousand of years, the earth began to be populated. So we ain't talking about no one or two brothers. We're talking about a great number of people here. Go ahead and read. Two, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So now we got these sons of God who are looking upon the daughters of men. And they seen that they were some fine sisters. And so they said, hey, I'm going to take them for wives. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is, he also is flesh. Now, the, now when these sons of God got with these daughters of men, the Lord said, oh, man, my spirit ain't going to be with them now. My spirit ain't going to be with them because they are getting involved with these daughters of men. We haven't got to the giants yet, though, yet. Go ahead and read. Yet his days shall be in 120 years. Go ahead. There were giants in the earth in those days. Now, there was giants in those days. That was before the sons of God even got involved with the daughters of man. And there was giants in the days of Moses. You go look back in the scriptures, you look at the sons of Anak. They were called giants. You look at the Philistines. They had giants in their family. So giants existed. These giants didn't make it past the flood. You understand what I'm saying? Because this was before the flood with Noah day. So these giants right here, they died off. So now we, we still got giants today. You go over in Africa, we got the little bitty people, the pygmies. And then we got the big, huge Hamites, the Watusis. They're here today. And why are they called giants? Because they are a big people, a huge people. You see some of them today. You go over, there, over in Africa, you see some very huge brothers. Brothers that you don't want to mess with. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. So now when these sons of God, God laid with the daughters of men, they had children. Mm -hmm. And then they had mighty men. They became mighty men. Go ahead and read. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Now we're going to deal with these sons of God. We're going to go into the book of uh, Job. The book of Job. Now, Job, he was a perfect and upright brother, a brother that feared God and he had shewed evil. 
And he had great substance. He had camel. He had oxen. He had sheep. He had a lot of livestock. And his children, they potted. They had good times with him. And, Lord, and, and, and Job, he was such a righteous brother, he made sure he offered up to the Lord in case his sons or daughters cursed the Lord. Go ahead, and we're going to pick this up at Job 1, and we're going to read verse 6, because we're going to bring these sons of God into play. Job 1 and verse 6. When you get there, Ben and I, go ahead and read. Now. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So now we got the sons of God, and who else we got coming up before the Lord? We got Satan himself. They reporting to God, ain't they? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth. See, Satan, he is a spiritual being. He is a falling angel. He does not dwell in heaven no more because he sinned against God. So what God did, he cast him out of heaven and put him on this earth. And so being a spiritual being, he does not get any sleep. He goes to and fro upon this earth, seeing and seeking whom he may devour. That is his job because he know what his end going to be. So he want a lot of company. But he had, we also had the sons of God with him also. They report. Because most people don't even understand that Satan cannot do anything to you unless the Lord allow it. Because he had to ask permission to even put his hands on Job. First he took everything Job had. And the Lord and Job still didn't sin against God. And then the Lord did he put Job on his deathbed. But he could not do it unless God gave him permission. That's right. That's right. Satan can't do anything to us unless uh, God give him permission. Now, Satan could dangle things in front of your eyes, but it's up to you. That's on you. I have a choice. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it again. Let's go to Zechariah because we're going to find out who else go to and fro on this earth. Now, we know Satan, he's a spiritual being. Let's go to Zechariah 4. Zechariah 4. For the visitors we have here, we read a lot of Bible here. Because like I said earlier, my words ain't going to profit you nothing. Only God's words going to matter here. And that's why we make sure we read his word. Because that's the only way you're going to get salvation. Coming from him. Now we, he might use us to speak his words. That's all he's doing. Zechariah 4 and 1. Zechariah 4 and 1. Now here in Zechariah 4. The Lord, you know, he's going to uh, mention a few things here. He's going to mention these seven, seven candlesticks, and he's going to mention the two olive trees. But we ain't dealing with that because it's talking about Zer Zerubbabel, which is going to lay the foundation and what have you, but that's talking about later. But we're just going to deal with this first and second verse, and then we're going to skip on down to verse 10. Zechariah 4 and 1. Go ahead and read. And the angel that talked with me came again and walked with and waked me. As a man that he is wakened out of his sleep, uh -huh. and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold, uh -huh. and a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. So we got this candlestick with seven lamps. But these seven lamps represent, they are symbolic. And we're going to see what these seven lamps are. Skip on down to verse 10. Go ahead and read. For who hath despised the day of small things? Uh -huh. For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet of the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. And who are those seven? Go ahead and read. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. Because the angels, those are what? The angels. Because those are the ones that report to God. And tell him what you are doing. And when, when they tell the Lord what you are doing, you know what the Lord doing? Writing it all down. That's why he's going to open up the books. Because the Lord, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. And we're going to read that. Because the Lord is watching everything you do. Don't think the Lord ain't never watching you. Because he's he going to hold you account of everything you do. And the only way he's going to hold account is because he got to know what you've done. He's going to be right. The angels are looking right now at you. Everything you do, you might think you're getting away with something, but the Lord is always there. He knows everything you're doing. Because the angel got the, a job to do. 
They are here to minister to those that are heirs to salvation. In other words, they are ministers to man. They are either here to help you or hurt you, one or the other. Let's look at it some more. Let's go to Proverbs, the 15th chapter. We're going to read it some more. Proverbs 15. Because the Lord is always watching. I don't care if it rather be good or evil. He's going to let you know that. Proverbs 15, and we're going to read one verse. 15 and 3. 15 and 3. When you get there, go ahead and read. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. I told you. The eyes of the Lord are all over. Oh, we were talking about an innumerable amount of beings. You know, you can't even put a number on the angels. Everybody got one there. Like when uh, Peter got broke out of the jail, like there in Acts. And then when he went to the house where all the other disciples were there, the, the little girl answered the door. They say they thought it was his angel. The angel was right there always watching and observing, watching what you do, beholding the good and evil. He's always watching. Now, let's go back and look at these sons of God again. Let's go to Job, the second chapter. This is after uh, the Lord, the Lord done allow Satan to take all, all Job's substance and everything. Now, he broke like most us brothers and sisters. But we understand we got, we deal with the most high and he, he delivered. Yes, sir. You know. Job 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Job 2 and 1. 2 and 1. Job 2 and 1. When you get there, go ahead and read. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Now we got the sons of God once again coming to present themselves before God. Go ahead and read. And Satan came also and among Satan them. And Satan coming also with him. To present himself before the Lord. Uh-huh. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Now, we're going to look at these sons of God because we're going to show you that these sons of God here are not the same sons of God in Genesis, the sixth chapter. There are two total, totally different sons. Let's go to uh, Job, the 38th chapter. Now, you know, Job, he was an upright brother. He was a perfect brother, and he was one that eschewed evil. But what he did, he said he had not sinned. That's when he blew the mission. Because now God going to come down himself and ask him a few questions that only God himself could know. He is the only one who could say that he had not sinned. See, angels, they can't even say they had not sinned because we got Satan in his dominion. It's a possibility you sin. The Lord made the angels holy, but Satan, he was a holy angel at first. But then he showed that he could do wickedness. He chose to do that. Only one person can, only one being can say they had, cannot sin, and that's God. Let's go to Job 38 and 1. 38 and 1. When you get there, go ahead and read. Then the Lord answered Job out of the world when and said. Now, who, see, now the God coming down personally, he going to ask him some questions. Because you done said you cannot sin. I got, some answer, I got some questions for you that I want you to answer. Go ahead and read. Two, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Uh -huh. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee an answer thou me. He said, I'm going to demand this of you. You better give me an answer. You better give me an answer. You say you haven't sinned? Well, answer me this. Go ahead and read. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? He said, where were you? You wasn't even created yet. Where were you? Declare if thou hast understanding. If you got some understanding, tell me this. How Who wasn't there with me? Wow. Go ahead and read. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Because God knew it was, he was the one that did that. Now, if you say you haven't done anything wrong, tell me this. <coughs> Go ahead and read. Six. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Uh -huh. When the morning star sang together. He said, where were you at when the morning star sang together? Go ahead and read. And all the sons of God shouted for joy. And all the sons of God shouted for joy. You wasn't created that. 
But so these are a totally different son of God. So let's find out who these sons of God are. Let's go to uh, Luke, the 15th chapter. Luke, the 15th chapter. Because, you know, the, the Pharisees, they had a problem with Jesus sitting down with the sinners and the publicans. You know, because they, the, the Pharisees considered them bad people. But the Lord, he came to save all, all that come to him. Because all of them did some, uh, everybody have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, they got caught up in their own self-righteousness. But that's who the Lord came to die for, the publicans and the sinners. He came to die for the world. He have no respect or purpose. He don't want nobody to pass, but all to come to repentance. That is what it's all about. And tell Rico to come turn down this seat. Please. Please turn it down. We had a brother fiddling with the buttons last week and sisters and brothers was freezing, but we got it, we got it under control now. <laughs> got a little frigidity out there. Luke 15. We're gonna pick it up. I know what they want me to do. They want me to pull out the white handkerchief, but I don't do that no. <laughs> Sorry. Luke 15. Here in Luke, the 15th chapter, he was uh, sitting down with the publicans. And then Jesus packed this, po uh, he, uh, packed this parable saying, you know, which one of you have lost one sheep? He had 100 sheep and lost one and didn't leave the other 99 to go find that one. And then when you found them, hey, man, you rejoice. You party because you found them. Just like when some of us lose what little pennies we got. I know I thought I lost $10. I could have cried. <laughs> I didn't stop looking for it until I found it. And when I found it, I rejoiced. That's how it is. And that's why Jesus was telling them this. But we're going to read what he said. Pick up uh, verse 7 and read. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. You see that? The Lord won't... <laughs> He, all he wants you to just repent. That's all the Lord requires. Repent and do what is right. You know, we got a hundred righteous brothers. Ain't no need of that. They righteous. They're going to do what's right. But then if you get that one sinner to turn, hey, man, we rejoice over that. And that is how the Lord do it. Skip on down to verse 10 and read. Verse 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that so, repented. Who, so who were these sons of God that had joy in the beginning? It was the angels. Because them sons of God back in, in uh, Job, those are angels. But they are not the same sons of God in Genesis, the sixth chapter. Let's show you. Let's go to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. And this is why we know it's not angels. Gonna deal with these Sadducees. The Sadducees, they didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe in a brother raising from the dead. So what they did, they tried to catch Jesus up. Because Israel had a law that if a brother married a sister and he had no children, the a brother, his brother had to raise up seed to him. So now they're gonna deal with these this sister and she's gonna marry some brothers. Matthew 22 and 24. Matthew 22 and 24. 22 and 24. When you get there, Brother Ben and I, go ahead and read. Pick it up at 23. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die, having no children, his brother should marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Go ahead. Now, there were with us seven brethren, the first which he had, which he had married a wife, deceased, and having no insu, in left his wife unto his brother. Likewise, the second also, and the third unto the seventh. So, you know, he tried to throw some little trickery on the map. You know, here it is. You got the author of the scriptures, yes. and you're trying to trick him. I know Jesus, sometimes he just laughed to himself. Who do these guys think they are? That corner you going around, I done been around that 20, 30 times, man. Go ahead and read. And the last of, the, and last of all, the women died also. So she had married seven, seven other brothers, and then she died. All of them died. 
Go ahead and read. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Go ahead, Jesus. Read Jesus is going to break this thing down. Because it ain't about being married in the resurrection. Go ahead and read. 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. He said, You there, man. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know the power of God, and you definitely don't know the scriptures. And the one who's telling you that these sons of God, these were angels that came in and the women, they don't know the scriptures. Go ahead and read. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. See, angels are not given to marry. They do not cohabitate with man. You understand? what? They are spirit beings. Why would a spirit man want to lay with some flesh? This sinful man. Come on, make some sense out of this. Here it is. I'm a holy vessel. I'm holy. Now I want to get with this sinful man. That don't make sense. But see, angels are not given. That they are. It said angels neither marry or are given to marry. That is plain. Now how you going to get around that? Finish reading that. 31. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which That's was good, spoken? That's good, but I just wanted to show you that angels do not marry. They do not marry, and they are not given in marriage. So those couldn't have been angels in Genesis, the sixth chapter. We're going to show you who these sons of God were. Let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, Genesis, the second chapter. Genesis 2. Heard the Gentile telling people that on TV. See, these were angels laying with women. These wasn't no angels laying with them women. You know? And you know, you, you know, it's a dangerous thing to preach lies in the name of the Lord. You mislead the people. And a lot of people don't understand that. Professing to be preachers. And then you get up there and say what you want to say because you don't understand the scriptures. You have to rightfully divide the scripture. It got to make sense. Yeah, that's right. You understand what I'm saying? It has to make sense. The Bible does not contradict itself. So your, a flag should come up when you read that. The angels are not giving the matter. So wait a minute. This thing is a little more different. Then you have to search the script again. You got to put it line upon line and precept, precept upon, upon precept. precept. Yeah. Here a little, there yeah, a little. You got, it's like a puzzle. You got to figure it out. And if you are a true servant of God, the Lord is going to give you the understanding to figure it out. Right. Genesis 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Genesis 2 and 7. Go ahead and read, brother. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So man was made out of the dust of the ground. And the Lord had to put the breath of life in him so that he may become mobile. Before he put the breath of life in him, he was just laying there. He wasn't mobile. He, wasn't, he didn't have life in him. It was the breath of life that made him become mobile. But skip on down to uh, verse 18 and read. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Now, this, this help meet is a help that is good. Because a wife should be a good help to her husband. And there's no limit to it. You understand what I'm saying? You know, and it's not good for man to be alone. But if you're able to, ain't nothing wrong with that either. Because when you are alone, all you have to do is deal with pleasing God. But when a man and a woman have a spouse, they got to work on pleasing their spouse in God. You know, and one thing about that, you know, God is a forgiving God. But some of these spouses, they ain't so forgiving. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? So I understand when brothers, uh, Paul, he was by himself. And he said, I wish that most, most of y'all would be like me. But if you can't contain yourself, if you feel that you need to get busy or something, you get married. You get your husband or you get your wife. Because you can't go out there fornication. Because that is against God. Go ahead and read some more. 19. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Uh -huh. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Go ahead. And Adam gave names to all cattle 
and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. Still, it wasn't a help that was good for him. So this is what the Lord decided he was going to do. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Uh -huh. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Go ahead. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And, and when, when, a husband, when a man and a woman join themselves together, they become one. They become a unit. And they have to man's men. You have to love your wives. You have to cherish them. You can't put nothing before them but God. And you women, you have to be subjective unto your husband. I know you don't like seeing it, but that's the book. And you have to conduct your, you have to be a help that is good. Because one thing that most couples don't realize, when they make them vows, they ain't just making them vows before man. They are making them vows before God. And God going to hold you to it. And so when you get out of, out of doing what God say do, you in trouble. Yeah. Because you done made them vows. A lot of people don't understand that. That's why daddy makes sure when he married people, he read it all to you. You ain't only standing before man, you are standing before God. And the Lord says it's better not to vow a vow and not yeah. keep it. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? It is a vow. And if you are, if you are a couple in the word of God, hey, y'all go back to the instructions if you have a problem. Yeah. Just go back to the instructions. I, you know, but you got people say, well, I don't want to hear that. Well, now you don't want to hear what's right. Because those are your guidelines. Your, this is your instructions. When you have problems, the word of God is your instruction to get it back together. How can you say you love someone and have hatred in you? And y'all supposed to be one flesh. That's just not possible. Now, let's go a little further. Let's go down to Genesis, the third chapter, and we're going to pick it up to, at verse 20. Genesis 3 and... Verse 20, 3 and 20, 3 and 20, 3 and 20. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. So every man that came from woman, she is the mother of all the living. Because you got some people that say there was another creation of man. There was no other creation of man. She is the mother of all living. The only one that didn't come from her is Adam. But she was made from Adam. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody else, came. she is the mother of all living. How absolute is that? Do you see another creation now? The people who teach that, they do not know the scriptures. They are lacking. Let's go a little further. Now we're going to look at some seeds here. Let's go to Genesis. We're going to look at the first two brothers. Let's go on up to Genesis, the fourth chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Genesis 4 and 1. When you get there, Israel, go ahead and read. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain uh -huh. and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So we got these two brothers. We got Cain. He dealt with vegetation. You know, he was a farmer. And then you got Abel. He dealt with the livestock, you know, the sheep and the cows and all that. Go ahead and read. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Now it's time for an offering to be brought before the Lord. Now Cain, he just going to grab something. Well, let me just take this, this, and throw it before the Lord. You know what I mean? Just give him anything. But watch what Abel do. Go ahead and read. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his See, Abel, he brought the very best. And that's what you have to do, sisters and brothers. You have to bring your all to the Lord. You got to bring your best to the Lord. You can't halfway serve God. You got to do the best you can. You got to put in a good shore. You can't just do just enough. There's no such thing with God. He wants you to do your best at all times. Go ahead and read. Five. 
but unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. You know, if you're going to come half cock, this is what you got. I ain't got no respect for you, man. I don't want to hear what you got to say. And he's going to tell him that. Go ahead and read. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance falling? You know, because you know, some people upset at God. They know they ain't doing right, and the Lord don't deliver them. So they upset at God. And the Lord saying, why, what are you upset for? What you upset for? Look what you're doing, man. Go ahead and read. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? All I want you to do is do well. And believe me, I accept you. I'm right there with you. Go ahead and read. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And sin, Satan is always there. Always dangling in your face. Go ahead and read. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And we all know what happened. What had happened, what? Cain, he had that envy in him. He got envious over what Abel had done. Abel did it right. The Lord accepted him. So what that, he, when that envy come, what happened? You get grudges. And then when that grudge come along, what you have? You have malice inside. You want to do harm to something. So what happened? He killed his brother. And he paid for it too. Because now after you done did sin, the Lord don't want to have nothing else to do with you. Lord done warned you already. And this is what the Lord did to him. Skip on down to verse, uh, skip on down to verse 15 and 16 and read. 16. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. The Lord didn't want to have nothing else to do with him now. Nothing else to do with him. You going out of my presence. I don't even want to see you no more. Go ahead and read. And dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Now and people say, well, where did, where did Cain get his wife from? What do you mean, where did Cain get his wife from? Where else could he get his wife from? It's his sisters. He was born from Eve. You ought to be no rocket scientist for that. You know what I mean? People try to make that out of some big thing. Abraham even married his sister. You understand what I'm saying? The earth, he told Adam to be fruitful and multiply. It was only when Eve was the mother of all living, right? So he had to marry his sister. They were just starting to populate the earth. But later on down the line, the Lord made a law that the sisters and brothers couldn't do that no more. He made a law that they couldn't do that because then the earth was populated. Enough is enough now. We done populated earth. Me and the brothers, can, sisters and brothers cannot marry no more. And the Lord done made it so when sisters and brothers do decide to co cohabitate, the babies be all screwed up. Go ahead and read some more, brother. 17. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. Uh -huh. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begot Mehujael, and Mehujael begot Methusael, and Methusael begot Lamech. And now we got a seed coming out of here, right? We got Cain and his seed, right? Let's go a little further. Let's see who, who, who Cain was. Let's go uh, to uh, 1 John, the uh, third chapter. Who did, who did Cain belong to? Because our main objective is, is to be a child of God. Now let's see who, who child was Cain. Go to 1 John, the third chapter. 1 John, the third chapter. You all right, brother? Yes, sir. Look like you're going to a boxing match. <laughs> First John 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. 3 and 10. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. And Jesus answered and said unto him. First two. John 3 and 10. First John 3 and 10. I'm sorry, bro. That's all right, brother. You're human. <laughs> First John 3 and 10. When you get there, Israel, go ahead and read. In this, the children of God are manifest. Now, this is how the children of God are manifest. Go ahead and read. And the children of the devil. So this is how you tell the distinct difference between a child of God and a child of Satan. Go ahead and read. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not a God. Now, if you ain't walking in righteousness, <laughs> you, you don't belong to God. That's, that's straight to the point, ain't it? If you do not walk in righteousness, you do not belong to God. Go ahead and read. Neither he that loveth not his brother. And the one that don't love his brother, you don't belong to God. How can you say you love God and hate your brother? How can you?
That just cannot happen. How can you say you love God who you have not seen mm -hmm. and hate your brother? That just don't happen. Go ahead and read. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning. Now he's taking you back to the beginning where we just read from. Go ahead and read. That we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked who one. Who was of that wicked one. Which wicked one? Satan. He belonged to Satan. Go ahead and read. And slew his brother. Uh-huh. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil. Then why did he slew him? Because his own, because he was short. That's why he slew his brother, because he fell short. And a lot of people be mad at righteous brothers because they've fallen short. Go ahead and read some more. And his brother's righteous. Uh -huh. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. And don't marvel if the world hates you. That, that's how it is. Here it is, you walking in righteousness. You expect the world to love you. It ain't going to happen. They despise you. They, they, they hate on you. They, they tell you, well, you think you are all that. I am all that if I belong to God. You ain't seen nothing yet because if I continue to walk right, hey, I'm going to be like them. And I'm going to see you a little later. <laughs> Let's look at it again. Let's go to John 8, chapter. St. John 8, chapter. <laughs> it's not going to be a, that long of a lesson. Here in the John 8 chapter, in the beginning, you know, uh, they brought this sister who had committed adultery. You know, all these brothers, they brought this sister she had committed. They caught her in the very act of adultery. And they, and they, and they brought her before the Lord and said, you know, hey. And the law is say, you know, if, if an individual commit adultery, they should be stoned to death. And Jesus, he was writing in the, and first of all, in the law, they're supposed to bring both of them, the man and the woman. <laughs> but he just brung the woman. You know, and Jesus, he, he was just sitting down there writing in the dirt. He looked up, he said, he that with no sin, cast the, the first, first stone. stone. He went back writing in the dirt. Next thing he knew, uh, the eldest on down to the youngest had left. Until the woman was just standing there by herself. He asked the woman, where are your accuser? Hey, I have none. I accuse you not. Sin no more. Because that's all the Lord wants you to do is repent. That's all. All he wants you to do is repent and turn back to him. We have a long-suffering God, a merciful God. All you got to do is turn back to him. Love, the Lord loved us so much that he allowed his only begotten to come and death. He didn't do nothing wrong. That's how much God loved you. Just so that you might have eternal life. Now, how much love is that? That is a mighty and great love. Let's go to, and now... John 8 and 31, because uh, what they said, you know, they said, you know, uh, you know, you, you, you bear record of yourself. He said, yeah, well, I'm bearing record of the one that sent me. You understand? And he is a witness to what I'm doing. And they went on talking about they was, you know, uh, he did this and did that. But he, we're just going to break this down. Go to 31, 8 and 31. Because the Lord said, you're going to have to continue in this word. And then that's how you know the ones belong to him, the ones that continue in this word. Go ahead and read. 31. And they besought him. That 31. He, 31. 8 and 30. 31. John, right? John, 8 and 31. Okay. I know what I'm talking about, brother. I stayed up all night okay. doing this lesson. <laughs> John, 8 and 31. <laughs> then, said, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, uh -huh. if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Now, them are the ones that you know belong to God, the ones that are continue in the word of God. How can you say you belong to God or you serve Jesus by doing things contrary to the word of God? Here it is, you're stealing, you're committing adultery, you're lying, and you say you belong to God? I don't think so. The Lord said, if you're going to be belong to him, you got to continue in this word. Go ahead and read. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And that's what's going to set you free. That is what's going to give you liberty, his word. Go ahead and read. Then answered him. They answered him. We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Now, you free. know this typical Israel right now. The Romans had a foot on their neck back then, talking about we being bondage to no man. They couldn't do nothing without the permission from the Romans. You understand? Go ahead and read. 34. Jesus answered them, answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. But we read that in 1 John. If you, if you commit sin, you belong to is a servant of sin. Go ahead and read. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. Go ahead. If the son thereof shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And if the son say you're going to be free, you're going to be free. Because Jesus did not sin, so he did not lie. If you continue in his word, you will be free. You will have liberty. That is what he came from. Go ahead and read some more, brother. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. Why, was they, why, why did they want to kill him? Because his word wasn't in him. You know, they, they bragging about I'm Abraham's seed. Yeah, you Abraham's seed, but God's word ain't in you. Why are you trying to kill me? I ain't did nothing to you. I have come to die for you. Go ahead and read. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Oh, so he's showing a distinct difference here. Yeah. I'm doing what my father say do, and you doing what your father say do. So it's obvious they got two different fathers, right? Go ahead and read. 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. He said, hey, if you Abraham was your father, you do the works. Because Abraham, he was righteous. He believed in God. You know, it, it, you know, you got the scriptures in front of everything that Abraham did. Hey, he worshiped God. Mm -hmm. He did what God said. Everything that you, all the scriptures are written about me. Why you ain't believe in God? Go ahead and read. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. See, see Abraham didn't do that. He didn't turn away from God. He did everything that he was even going to kill his only, he was going to kill Isaac. He was going to kill him. He was going to kill Isaac because God had already told him, say, hey, man, through Isaac, your seed going to be born. He knew something was going to happen. He knew Isaac was going to bring him back to life or it wasn't nothing going to happen when he stabbed him. One or the other because God had already told him, hey, dude, your seed going to go through Isaac. Now, that was some straight up faith. Because uh, Isaac, he was going up, with, up on the mountain with him. He said, hey, hey Father, where, where, where's the sacrifice? We got the wood. <laughs> we got the knife. Uh, but where, where's the sacrifice at? All Abraham said, well, hey, man, the Lord's going to provide. And sometimes you got to think that way. The Lord is going to provide. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, it, it looks dim for you. You, might, you, you wonder how you, you're going to make it. But you got to believe in God's word and know what he say is true. And say, hey, I know the Lord's going to provide. And he come through, providing you doing what you're supposed to do. Okay. That's what it's all about. You got to believe. You got to trust in this thing. You got to believe all what the Lord say. Yes. That's what faith is all about. Don't waver. Don't doubt. Just believe. Go ahead and read some more. 41. Ye do the deeds of your father. Uh -huh. Then said they to him, we be, born not a, we, be born, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. You now they say, now they trying to justify themselves. But Jesus is going to let them know. Go ahead and read. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me. And that was plain. If God was your father, <laughs> you would love me. Yes. That's why I tell all them brothers and sisters who say they don't believe in Jesus, I believe in the Father. If you believe in the Father, you will love the Son. Because all judgment is given to him. You understand what I'm saying? When he came up out of that grave, all judgment was given to him. And it's going to be a terrible day when you have to stand before him and you done denied him. Go ahead and read some more. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. He said, you know, I came straight from the Father. I didn't offered to go. He sent me. He the one told me to come. And now you ain't accepting me? Go ahead and read. Why do ye, why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. And that's what happened. You know, you can preach this gospel to people. You can make it so plain to them. But they don't understand. Because they don't have the Father in them. Because they don't believe in Jesus. Because in order to get some understanding from the scriptures, you got to believe in Jesus. You got to, because you notice all the people who don't believe in Jesus, they ain't got no understanding. They don't have no understanding. How you going to bypass the son? You can't bypass the son to get to the father. Because the son, he came with the word from the father. 
Go ahead and read some more. Ye are of your father the devil. See who they belong to? They were of their father the devil. Satan was their father. Go ahead and read. And the lust of your father ye will do. Uh -huh. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning. Go ahead and read. And abode not in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And all the murders and lies, that is their father. The ones that sin against God, this is their father. Satan is their father. Now, let's go look at So now we got Cain and his seed. And we got Abraham, I mean, we got Pharisees. Their father was Satan. Now let's look at this other scene. Let's look at, uh, let's go to Genesis, the fourth chapter. Because after um, Abel died, got murdered, we're going to see Adam and Eve have another child. We're going to look at this scene. Genesis 4. And we're going to pick it up at verse 25. 4 and 25. 4 and 25. When you get there, Israel, go ahead and read. And Adam knew his wife again, uh -huh. and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God said, She hath appointed me another son. For God, for God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Uh -huh. And to Seth. To him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. So now we got Seth. He took the place of Abel, and he started having children, right? Go on into Genesis, the fifth chapter, and read, brother. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Go ahead. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam. In, that, in the day when they were created. Go ahead. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth. So Adam, he had Seth. Skip on down to verse 6 and read. And Seth lived 105 years and begot Enos. And so Seth, he begot a son. I mean, and I'm doing this genealogy for a reason. Go ahead, skip on down to verse 9 and read. And Enos lived many, 90 years and begot Canaan. Go, skip on down to verse 12 and read. And Canaan lived 70 years and, get, and begot Mahalalel. Skip down to 15 and read. And Mahalalel lived 70, 60 and 5 years and begot Jared. Skip on down to verse 18 and read. And Jared lived 160 and 2 years and begot Enoch. Now skip down to verse 21. And Enoch lived 75 years and begot Methuselah. So we got, the, we got Seth in his genealogy. Seed after seed after seed. Now, let's go look at Jesus' seed, his genealogy. Let's go to Luke, the third chapter. Luke, the third chapter. We, this all going to make sense. Going to make some sense about this. So we got Cain and his seed, right? Now we got Seth in his seed, right? Luke 3, we're going to pick it up at verse 21, 3 and 21, 3 and 21. When you get there, go ahead and read. Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also, being baptized and prayed, the heaven was open. Uh -huh. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. Now, Jesus didn't have to get baptized because he was holier than anyone around. But he, had, he, told, uh, he told John the Baptist, do it to suffer, suffer the soul for righteousness sake. To tell you that, hey, you must be baptized. You have to be baptized. Baptism is a part of your salvation. Because the book says, he that is baptized shall be saved. And he, that, he, and he that is not baptized shall be damned. So, hey, baptism have everything to do with your salvation. But go ahead and read 23 and read. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed by the son of Joseph, which was the son of Hillel. So now we got Jesus' genealogy coming on down. Skip on down to verse 34 and read. Which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Terah. Now which, sk which skip on down to verse 37 and read. 
which gonna, gonna, gonna get to where we had just left off in Genesis. Go ahead and read. Which was the son of Methuselah, uh -huh. which was the son of Enoch. Now we read all this right in Genesis, right? Go ahead and read. Which was the son of Jared. Go ahead. Which was the son of Melanie. Go ahead. Which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So who was that? Who were they talking about in Genesis, the sixth chapter? The, the, the seed right here uh, is the son of God. This was the holy seed. And what did they do? They got tangled up with Cain's seed. That's why he said, the Lord said, my spirit is not going to dwell with man. Because he knew once that that holy seed got tangled up with that Cain seed, it was going to turn them away from the word of God. That is so plain. It's just like we teach today. If you are not married now, we suggest that you marry somebody in the word of God. Because if you go out there and marry somebody in the world, hey, you got problems. You going to have problems. That's why we suggest that you marry somebody in the word of God. Ain't nothing wrong with meeting somebody outside of church, but make sure they come in the word of God. And be sure of that. Bring them on into the fold. Because sooner or later, something going to break up in the house. I'm t I done seen it. Believe me, I'm telling you from experience. Everybody has to be on the same page because if you get with somebody outside the word of God, it is not going to bring nothing but problems. One spouse want to do this, the other spouse want to do that. One spouse want to have pork chops in the refrigerator, you don't want it. One spouse want to do Christmas. One spouse wants you to go to their mother church on Easter. You understand what I'm saying? Everything is going you ain't gonna have, it's gonna be like oil and water. It will not mix. There's nothing wrong with meeting somebody outside the church, but just make sure they come into the word of God. That's all. That's all, sisters and brothers. And that is what the who these sons of God was. They were the holy seed. They yes, were the seed of Adam which, through Seth. And that and the daughters of men was the seed of Cain. Now that we got that established, let's keep going. Let's go on now to uh, Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Because when you're a child of God, believe me, it ain't going to be no bed of roses. Because when the Lord receives you, you're going to go through some things. Hebrews 12, and we're going to pick it up at 6. Because I ain't never seen a servant of God yet that had it either. <laughs> I ain't seen it yet. If I see a person calling himself a servant of God and nothing happened to him, I got to scratch a hole in my head because, hey, I'm being oppressed all the time. And the Lord going to tell you that here. When you come into the word of God, expect some affliction. Expect that. That is a part of this plight. That is a part of this walk. I ain't seen a brother yet or a sister yet. Now I have no problem. <laughs> Hebrews 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Go ahead and read. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receives. That's absolute, ain't it? Every son. We, we could say every child. That comes with the territory. Go ahead and read. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Go ahead. But if ye be without chastisement. Now if you don't get no chastisement, this is who you are. Go ahead and read. Wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. See, you don't even belong to God. You understand what I'm So that's why when I see brothers, you know, the rich just having fun all the time. Because I be looking. I say, man, Lord, look at all the fun they having. Here it is. I'm trying to scuffle to get my mortgage paid. They getting everything. Got bill collectors calling me every day. I'm checking the phone ID. Don't want to pick <laughs> up the phone. Go ahead and read. Nine. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Because, you know, when we were younger, man, when our parents tore us up, we respect them. <laughs> All we had to do was hear them creeping somewhere and we straighten out. <laughs> That's how much respect we hear from. Go ahead and read. 
for they verily for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure. You know, and they get on and talk with their sisters and brothers. Bro. Yeah, I tore them up. <laughs> I tore them and I'm just waiting for them to do it again. I'm going to tear them up some more. <laughs> They did it for their own pleasure, and they brag about it and dare you to say anything. <laughs> Go ahead and read. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. See, the Lord got to go upside our heads to straighten us out. And he's doing it for our own benefit because he loves us. Go ahead and read. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. I'm telling you that now, boy, because sometimes when the Lord chastises you, you just, you just hurt. And you just break, break down on your knees and say, Lord, enough is enough, please. And it's not joyful. Go ahead and read. But grievous. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised because thereby. Because after that, after he done whoop you upside your head, you start acting right. You be very mindful of everything you do. Everything you do, you're trying to make sure it's done right. Because you don't want, to happen, want, want nothing to happen to you that, that uh, happened to you last time. It makes you perfect. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet. All the Lord wants you to do is make your path straight. Stop walking crooked. Stop doing things contrary to the word of God. Get straight. Get right. Go ahead and read. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. And that's all the Lord wants you to do is be healed. Get right. Let's go a little further. Let's go to uh, Psalms 94. Because he's he going to chest tab you. And he's going to give you what you need to get right. And we're going to show you what he's going to give you to get right. Psalms 94. Psalms 94. Psalms 94. And we're going to pick it up. At verse 12, 94 and 12, 94 and 12. When you get there, Brother Ben and I, go ahead and read. Blessed is a man whom thou chastenest. See, it's a blessing to get chastised by the, That is a true, you don't hear them people, you ain't going to hear that tomorrow. When the Lord chastised me, it was a real blessing. You will not hear that. <laughs> go ahead and read. O oh Lord, and teacheth him out of thy law. See, so he's going to chastise you, and then he's going to teach you out of his law. He's going to teach you what you have to do. He's going to show you what he wants you to do out of his law. The law is what shows you all the do's and the don'ts. Go ahead and read. That thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity. What is adversity? Afflictions and hardship. He give you rest when you keep his word. That's what that adversity is. When you go through some hard times, the Lord give you rest. He let you have some rest. He said, don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord, he makes something out of nothing all the time. He showed me his power all the time. Sometimes his flesh just get weak, weak and, you know, yeah. and, 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 and yes, I lose sir. faith sometimes. That's why I asked the Lord, help my unbelief, Lord. Mm. Like the brother in the scripture said, you know, just give me the strength to believe and hold on. Keep me, Lord. Finish reading that. That thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. And when is the pit going to be digged for the wicked? The when end. he returns. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it some more. Let's go some more. Let's go to uh, Proverbs, the third chapter. Proverbs, the third chapter. Just reading some of this stuff. Because, you know, too many times I get up and I look at religious channels and stations and I Never hear them talking about the chastisement of the Lord. You know, all they teach you is how to get money. That's the real blessing, money, prosperity. You're going to get rich, but give me mine first. Lord, make sure you get yours. <laughs> That's what they preach to you. Just bring me $100 and you will get a blessing. <laughs> And the blessing you're going to get is you cannot pay your light bill next week. <laughs> it is. They got lights and everything, and you in the dark with a candle waiting <laughs> on your blessing. <laughs> Proverbs 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Proverbs 3 and 11. Proverbs 3 and 11. 
And y'all know that's how it is. That's why I thank God we don't, nobody gets paid here. Nobody gets paid here. And any penny that come to this church, it goes to the church. Praise Lord, God. them bless uh, his teachers and ministers to have nice jobs to take care of themselves, just to get them back. Oh, I take that back. You know, a couple of brothers get paid, you know, the custodial maintenance engineers. <laughs> <laughs> the janitors, they get paid. Other than that, nobody gets paid. But they worthy of their hire. They, keep, they do a good job. Mm -hmm. They keep the yeah. place clean. You understand what I'm saying? But it's a very small salary. <laughs> very small. <laughs> Proverbs 3 and 11. 3 and 11. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Don't despise the chastisement of the Lord. Don't despise it. Rejoice when the Lord uh, chastises you. Go ahead and read. Neither be weary of his correction. Go ahead. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. See, the Lord, he loves you. That's why he got to correct you. And the only way he corrects you is by chastising you. And the only reason he do it is because he loves you. Because when you know you're doing what's right before God, hey, you know it's going to be all right. Like I say all the time, majority of the time when the Lord go upside your head, you know why. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Because he bring it to your attention. Uh -huh. He lay it out. You know what you did. <laughs> and this is why I'm doing it. <laughs> go ahead and read. Middle of 12. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Uh -huh. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. And that's what he give you. We just read, say, it's read where he give you the law. Who teaches you how to, the law is your wisdom and your understanding. Because when you are doing what the Lord say do, people understand you got some knowledge, man. It's a good thing when the Lord, you can tell people why you doing things and you can show it in the scriptures. Because you are professing to be godly. And if you professing to be godly, you should be able to show what you're doing out of his word. That's the difference between a child of God and a child of Satan. They can show why they do things. Let's go a little further. Let's go to Revelation third chapter. And I'm going to tell you, you can't, you can't serve the God halfway. If you're going to serve him, you got to serve him fully. You can't be no lukewarm. Because no, I'm going to show you what he's going to do to the ones that serve him lukewarm. He's going to show you. Here in Revelation third chapter, he was talking to the churches, these seven churches. And we're going to look at this last one he was talking to. Because, you know, you got a lot of brothers and sisters out here think they can straddle the fence. You, you can't straddle no fence. No. You, you, you can't halfway do it. You're going to be all in or all out, one or the other. If you're not, you're just wasting your time. If you're coming halfway, you're just wasting your time. Revelation 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. 3 and 14. When you get there, go ahead and read. And unto the angel of the church of, of the Lacedonians. Right, these things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Go ahead. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would whether that thou, I would whether thou wert cold or hot. Lord, Lord say, I know your works, man. You're not either cold or hot. I wish you'd be right, either one of them. I wish you'd make up your mind. But you're lukewarm now, and this is what I'm going to do to you. Go ahead and read. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You see what the Lord going to So you can't straddle the fence. It's going to be just like you ain't serving him at all. He's going to spew you out of his mouth with that two-edged sword. Because that's what come out of his mouth, that two-edged sword. It's going to cut you up. Go ahead and read. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Because, you know, most rich people, they, they trust in their riches. And that's the thing that you, you ain't going to buy your way in the kingdom. No. You will not get in the kingdom with a few thousand dollars. It was that easy, then, hey, I would have been saving up. You're going to have to work to get it now. And you're right, you're going to have to work in righteousness. But he said, you, you got all this money, but you're miserable and you're poor, you're blind and you're naked. Go ahead and read. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment. What is this white raiment? This, this white raiment rep represents righteousness. Yes, you understand? Sir. What is tried in the fire? This word. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead and read. That thou mayest be clothed. And that's what's going to close you. Because you want these white raiments. 
Because if you don't got the right kind of clothes on, you will not get in the kingdom. You will not get in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Go ahead. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Will you see what the Lord says? As many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. In other words, I go upside the head. Uh -huh. But I do it because I love them. Go ahead and read. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And the Lord said, be zealous for me. Repent. Turn, return from your wicked ways. Be sorry for what you have done and turn back to me. Because this is what I'm going to do. Go ahead and read. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. Every time this word come to brothers and sisters, the Lord is knocking. And all he wants you to do is come on in. That's all he wants you to do. See, when the Lord, when you, when, you, when you receive these words, the Lord is right there with you. Because he is not going to twist your arm to come serve him. I see no. brothers, brothers and sisters trying to force their family members to come to church. Don't force them. Let them want to do it. Because you ain't going to be able to force them to come all the time. No. They have to want. Because the Lord, read that again. What did he say? Behold, I stand at the door and what? 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. You see that? The Lord will eat with you. You understand what I'm saying? Let's go a little further. Let's go to Luke uh, 15 chapter. Because I don't care what you have done, sisters and brothers, as long as you got the breath of life in you, hey, the Lord will always be there to accept you. Understand? As the Lord has always got his long, merciful arms stretched out to you, wanting you to turn back to him. We got a long suffering God. Man, I thank God for his mercy. Yes, sir. Man, I thank him for his mercy. Praise God, man. Jesus. Because I know a lot myself and a lot of more people done did wrong before him. Yeah. But he had, he had enough compassion on me to allow me to see this word and hear it and allow me to do it. I don't care how old you are. Hey, the Lord is always, as long as you have the breath of life in you, you can always come to God. Yes, he sir. is always there. Go look at this prodigal son. This is the scripture where it talks about this prodigal son. 15 and 11. Luke 15 and 11. 15 and 11. Go ahead and read. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. So we got these two sons. The youngest son, he decided, hey, man, there ain't nothing going on in this household. Dad, give me my money, man. Let me go. Go ahead and read. And not many days after the youngest son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And that's what happened the majority of the time. These young people get out to <coughs> leave mom and daddy. And then they go out there trying to be on their own. Next thing you know, they're calling you back, wanting to come back in. <laughs> But he took all the money. He went far away. Live that right, you know, that, that worldly living. Go ahead and read. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Uh -huh. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Now he was living with his old man. His old man had everything he wanted. So the old man gave him in his hand. So he went on to a fucking blew all his money. And now he's working for somebody. Go ahead and read. 16. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Uh -huh. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. He said, Wait a minute. Here it is. My, my dad got servants living better than I am. What am I doing in here? <laughs> All right, this is what I'm going to do. Go ahead and read. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee uh -huh. and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came. So what he's about to do is going to do the right thing. He's going to humble himself. He's going to go before his father and say, Lord, I, you know, hey, I am not worthy to be called your son. And that's what the Lord wants you to do. All he wants you to do is humble yourself and come back to him. And if you ain't been with him, just come to him. He's out there. He always got his hand out there to you.
Go ahead and read. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the, and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. So he really, he really bringing it to the old man, ain't he? He's showing that he's sorry for what he has done. And that's what God wants you to be. He wants you to be sorry for what you have done. Uh -huh. Go ahead and read. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this, my son was dead uh -huh. and he is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. So why, how, how was he dead? He was spiritually dead. But then he came back among the living. Among the people that was walking in the spirit. And that's why the Lord got written in his word that the angels in heaven, they rejoice when one sinner repent and turn back to him. Mm -hmm. They party. They happy. They rejoice because they know they have done their job. Let's go a little further. Let's go to Romans, the first chapter. Because we all know that Jesus was born to be the son of God. But we, we want to show you when he really, really became the son of God to the fullest. Let's go to Romans 1. We almost there. There ain't going to be no long lesson today. We almost there. Romans 1. Because we all understood that Jesus, he was born to be son of God. But we know he didn't really become the son of God to the fullest until he came up out of that ground. And the word of God going to show you. Romans 1 and 1. Go ahead and read. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Go ahead. Which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Because he had to come through the seed of David. He had to come. It was written. He promised David. That Jesus was going to come through his loins. Go ahead and read. And declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. And that is when he be, really became the son of God. After the resurrection. When he came up that, out of the, that's when he really became the son of God. After the resurrection. That's why they called him the son of man, son of man, son of man all while he's on this earth. But when he came up out of that grave, he became the son of God to the fullest. That's why he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And when the resurrection comes, when he returns, we're going to show you, he's going to give that same power to you. Let's look at it some more. Let's go to Acts the 13th chapter. Acts the 13th chapter. This is Paul and them, they had, uh, they was in Antioch and Pisidia. And they were, they were sitting down on the Sabbath day. And they asked, uh, and you had the men talking, and they asked Paul, did he want to exhort, had any words of exhortation? So he started running this thing about from the prophets on down. But now he's going to deal with uh, the children of God here and deal with the sons of God because it was written about Jesus coming up out of that resurrection being the son of God. Let's go to... Uh, Acts 13, and we're going to pick it up at 32. Go ahead and read. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the Father. Because that was a promise made to the Father, that Jesus was going to come out of the lines of David, and he was going to be the Son of God. Go ahead and read. God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, that in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also See, written. What he say, in that he hath raised up Jesus again to do what? Go ahead and read. As it is also written in the second Psalms, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. But that happened when he was rose, when he mm -hmm. rose, right? But it said the second Psalms, right? Because it's all written about him. The prophets had wrote about everything concerning Jesus. You know, the New Testament, it has testified to what the prophets wrote about. You know, because that's why we always tell you there's no such thing as no Old Testament or no New Testament Christian. You're either going to use the whole Bible or don't use none of it at all. How can you tell a story with half the book? 
You can't do it. I don't never go to the movie and just look at half the movie and know it all. And if it's a part one and part two, I got to look at it. Let's go look at it because it's in Psalms, the second chapter, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go Psalms, second chapter, and look at where they wrote it at. Psalms 2. Two, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. 2 and 6. Go ahead and read. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Go ahead. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. So, so Paul, he was quoting from the prophets, right? Mm -hmm. He had, was quoting what David had wrote. But then he also said David wrote about Jesus some more. Skip on down to 11. Go ahead and read. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. You better serve the Lord with fear because that's the whole duty of man, to fear God and keep his commandments. Because if you fear God, you will do what he say. You won't have no problem with doing what the Lord say do if you fear him. Go ahead and read. Kiss the son. He said you better kiss the son. Go ahead and read. Lest he be angry and ye perish from the way uh -huh. when his wrath is kindled but a little. You hear that? You better kiss the son. Because all you have to do is kindle, you know, kindle his wrath just a little bit. And he will destroy you. But people don't like hearing about that Jesus. You know, they, they like hearing about the little lovey covey Jesus. No, no, no. When Jesus come back, he's going to deal with this man. And he's going to kill everything that need to die. And that's book. Go ahead and read. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, uh -huh. blessed are all they that put their trust in him. And it is a true blessing to trust in the son. You got to trust in the son of God. You have to. I put all my trust in him. Let's go a little further. Let's go look at it some more. Let's go to Colossians, the first chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Few more scriptures. We out of here. I promise y'all. Colossians 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Colossians 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Colossians 1 and 12. When you get there, go ahead and read. Give thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Go ahead. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Go ahead. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. And that is the only way you're going to be redeemed is through the blood of Jesus. Nothing else could redeem you but the blood of Jesus. Either Jesus came and died for your sins or you're going to die for your own. One or the other. You too. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? He is the image of the invisible. Who is the invisible God? The Father. Nobody have ever seen the Father. Nobody. Go ahead and read. For by him were we were all things created that are in heaven. See, and Jesus created all things that is in heaven. Go ahead and read. And that are on earth, Go ahead. visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. See, and a lot of that's, that's one of the biggest secrets in the world. Nobody understands that Jesus created all things, everything in heaven and on this earth. He the one that created the angels. He made everything in heaven and in earth. The Father just sitting there. The son is the one, the one that's known to us as the son. He is the one that did all the work. In the beginning, it was just two entities that made up the Godhead. But one of them had to come and die for our sin. And that's where you have, the, they, they got the title, Father and Son, when Jesus came in the flesh. But in the beginning, he was God. You had two entities making up the Godhead. And after he died and rose up, and when he sat on the right hand of the Father, he got his power right back. And there's no name given in heaven, in heaven or earth bigger than Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? The, and nobody understands that Jesus came to glorify the Father's name. No, you know, you ask the average Christian, what is the Father's name? Father. That's a title, man. 
father's name is Jesus. That's why the son came to glorify the father's name. That is why when you get baptized in the father and the son and the Holy Ghost, you get baptized in the name of Jesus because that name Jesus covered the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. But most people don't know that. They think it's three in one. No, that's three different entities. And if you keep coming here, we'll teach you that. Go ahead and read some more. 17. And he is before all things. See, Jesus is before all things. He is before all things. Nothing is before him. Go ahead and read. And by him all things consist. And you hear that? Uh, but not all things consist. That's the absolute aim. Mm -hmm. Can't nothing happen without him. Let's look at it a little further. Let's go to Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans 8. Because that same spirit that raised Jesus up is the same spirit going to raise us up. Romans 8, and we're going to pick it up at 11. 8 and 11. Romans 8 and 11. When you get there, go ahead and read. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. See, the Lord is going to raise you up with the same spirit. But Jesus, he was walking in the spirit of God. And if you plan on getting raised up, you're going to have to walk in the spirit of God. Go ahead and read. Therefore, brethren, we are dead oars, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Uh -huh. But if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Now, if you live after the flesh, you're going to die. Because when you live after the flesh, you are doing things contrary to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. But if ye, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. In other words, if you discipline your body, that's what mortify. You got to discipline your body, you know, with the, the Spirit. You understand? The Spirit has to live in you. Why you don't steal? Because the Spirit told you, don't steal. Why you don't kill? Because the Spirit that mortifies your body, that disciplines your body, say, don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery. You have to walk in this Spirit. You have to discipline yourself. You just can't do up what your flesh wants you to do. Because this flesh wants to do everything. It wants any and everything. And a lot of it. So you got to discipline this body. Go ahead and read. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You see that? Yeah. So if you're going to be a child of God, you have to be led by the Spirit. And that Spirit is the Word of God. Go ahead and read. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again of fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Go ahead. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. See, the Spirit itself bear witness that we are. You know, the angel is watching. Yeah. He watching what kind of spirit you are walking in. And he reports. And he tells everything. He tells everything. He is the one bearing witness. Go ahead and read. And if children, then heirs. Now, if you're a child of God, you mean you are heirs. Go ahead and read. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Now, if you suffer with God, you're going to be glorified with him. Go ahead and read. 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So whatever you're going through, you go through it. Be content. Because it ain't worth, man, you got so much coming to you. Whatever you got to deal with, deal with it. It's going to be worth it all. I don't care. Whatever you're going through, deal with it. Because it can't be compared to what the Lord got in store for you. And when he give it to you, you're going to say, man, I'm glad I went through what I went through. And I'm just why I struggle with this thing. And I try to do this walk, man. Because I want all what God got coming through, what God promised me. And that is why I serve God, to get eternal life. Sometimes the Lord can't give us too much in this walk right here, on this, this natural walk. Because if we he give us too much, we might kill ourselves. Go ahead and read. 19. 
for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. See, we waiting to be manifested to be fully sons of God. Skip on down to uh, verse uh, 27 and read. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what he is in the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Go ahead. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. You know, hey, whatever you're going to, whatever you're going through, it's going to work out the good for you. It's going to work out for the best for you. I know you don't see quite what you're going through now is going to be any good to you, but I'm telling you, you just got to hold on. Because the book says we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. If you're walking in the word of God, whatever you're going through, the Lord going to see you through it. Go ahead and read. To them who are called, who to them who are the called according to his purpose. Go ahead. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. See, Jesus is the only one to be born from the dead among many brothers. You understand? He is the first. And we're going to show you when everybody else going to come. But he is the first among what? Many brothers. Uh -huh. Let's look at it. Let's go to 1 John, the third chapter. Because we are waiting to truly be child of God to the fullest. Because, you know, when you're a child of God, there's certain things that you cannot do. Certain things you cannot do when you are fully a child of God. 1 John 3 and 9. 3 and 9. Go ahead and read. Whosoever is born of 1 God. 1 John 3 and 1. I'm sorry. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. See, the, Lord ain't, the, the world ain't going to know you, sisters and brothers. Don't expect the world to love you. They ain't, they ain't going to love you because they, they didn't even know the one who came and died for you. Go ahead and read. Behold, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. See, we don't, it don't yet appear what we shall be. We ain't there yet. Go ahead and read. But we know that. When he shall appear, he, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. But when, we, when he appear, then we'll be like him. But for now, we're still in his flesh. We ain't like him yet. It don't appear what we shall be yet. Go ahead and read. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Go ahead. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And that is one thing you don't want to, you do not want to violate God's commandments. Because the wages of sin is death. Go ahead and read. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. And there's no sin in Jesus. And he don't want you sinning. That's why he's telling his servant, walk perfect before him. You have to try to do what's right. You have to. Go ahead and read. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Uh -huh. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. You know, that's why I have a problem when people tell you you don't have to keep the law. You telling me it's all right to sin. How can you say you abide in Jesus and you telling me it's all right to sin? Go ahead and read. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Go ahead. He that committeth sin is of the devil. You hear that? So if you commit sin... You belong to the devil. Well, what is sin? He told you what sin was. Sin is a transgression of the law. So when you sin, you violate God's law. You violate his commandments. You break his commandments. That is so plain. But you will never see this read in the church. You, you have to break their arm to make them read that. Go ahead and read. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. See, Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan, destroy all the works of the flesh. That's what Jesus came for, to show you that, hey, man, you can do this. Just believe in me. Go ahead and read. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. See, we ain't tr truly born of God to the fullest because when you are truly born of God, you cannot sin. And can't nobody in here say that. Hmm. Nobody in here say, can say, I cannot sin. We are still flesh. We are capable of sinning. 
But when we are truly born of God, we will not be able to sin. But that's the transition, and we're going to show you that. Go ahead and read. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, uh -huh. for his seed remaineth in him, and, and he cannot See, sin. He cannot sin when he is born of God. Not won't, but he cannot. Because he is born of God. Why? Because he is born of God. You are a child of God as long as you're doing walking in righteousness, but you haven't been fully a child of God yet because that is a process. It is the steps you must take, and we're going to look at them. We're going to show you. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. We only got three more after this, y'all. But I'm telling you, they long. <laughs> First Corinthians 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 20. 15 and 20. When you get there, go ahead and read. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. And what, what is the first fruit? The first one to be raised from the dead. First fruit, the first one to ever be raised from the dead. But when everybody else going to come? Go ahead and read. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Now, because Adam sinned, that brung death, right? Mm -hmm. But then because, uh, because Jesus came and died by sin, that brung the resurrection. Go ahead and read. For as in Adam all die, uh -huh. even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Uh -huh. But every man in his own order. See, every man in his own order. Go ahead and read. Christ the first fruit. Christ the first one. Go ahead and read. Afterwards, they that are Christ that is coming. When? At his coming. You mean to tell me when them, them brothers and sisters go out there, that ain't went up to heaven? That is coming. I don't they ain't going to raise until he come up, till he return. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So everybody that done died, they are in the grave. They are not with the Lord yet. Because the book is very specific here. Read that last verse again. 23. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruit. The first one to ever raised from the dead. Go ahead and read. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. And he have not came yet. Let's look at his coming. Skip on down to verse 42 and read. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. You no, know, it, it, it is it, this is a decomposed. Yo, know, this flesh will decompose. It is sown in corruption. In other words, it is, it is in a corruptible manner. Go ahead and read. It is raised in incorruption. Uh -huh. It is sown in dishonor. Uh -huh. It is raised in glory. Because when the Lord raises it, it's going to have glory. Go ahead and read. It is sown in weakness. You know, because this, this flesh is real weak. Mm -hmm. It hurts. Lord knows it hurts. Flesh hurts so now as you get older, it just hurts and it hurts, sisters and brothers. I know. I can sneeze the wrong way and hurt. <laughs> I'm serious, sisters and brothers. I sneeze and I it, it moves something in my body and it hurts. <laughs> I, I didn't know what it was. This flesh is weak. Go ahead and read. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. See, because when you be raised from the dead, you're going to have power. Amen. You ain't going to hurt no more. Go ahead and read. It is sown in natural body. It is raised in spiritual body. See, it was, it's sown in this natural body. But you're going to come up out of that ground a spiritual body. Go ahead and read. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual See, body. See, there's a natural body, which we have now. But we're going for that spiritual body. Go ahead and read. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Uh -huh. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. And that, who is this last Adam? It's Jesus. Jesus. He's a spirit being now. Go ahead and read. How be it? That was not first, which he is spiritual, but that which he is natural. But before Jesus put on the spiritual body, he walked in the natural body, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And afterward, that which we is spiritual. Uh -huh. The first man is of the earth, earthy. Uh -huh. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. Go ahead. As he is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as he is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Go ahead. And as we have borne the image of the earth. Which we got now. Go ahead and read. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. And we're going to bear the image of the heavenly. We're going to get that same kind of body Jesus got. Because this is what he's going to do when he returns. Go to Philippians 3. This is what the Lord going to do when he returns. We got two more after this, y'all. Philippians 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 20. 3 and 20. 3 and 20. Go ahead and read. For our conversation is in heaven. 
from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're looking for that. Go ahead and read. Who shall change our vile body. He's going to change his vile body. Go ahead and read. That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. That it's going to be like his glorious body. <laughs> that is what the Lord going to do when he returns. He's going to change his vile body unto like his glorious body or that spiritual body. Go ahead and read. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. That is good. Now let's go back to 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter and finish reading that. We're going to pick it up where we left off at, at verse 49. 1 Corinthians 15 and 49. When you get there, Israel, go ahead and read. And as we have borne the image of the earthy. Uh, which we, we have now. Go uh -huh. ahead and read. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. See, you ain't going to get in the kingdom of God with this body right here. It ain't going to happen. You will not get in the kingdom, kingdom of God with this flesh and blood body. It is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. Go ahead. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. See, everybody ain't going to die, but everybody going to get their change. When? Go ahead and read. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. How many times that last trump going to happen? One time. One time, and that's when the Lord comes. Well, go ahead and read. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. So at first the dead going to be raised up. They're going to come up out of their grave. Go ahead and read. And we and we shall be changed. And the ones that's living, that belong to God, they're going to make their change. Go ahead and read. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, uh -huh. and this mortal must put on immortality. And how are you going to get an immortality? By having a spiritual body, because spirit beings do not die. Go ahead and read. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Because once you, make, once you come up in that resurrection, you cannot die anymore. Death is out of the way. You have made it. And when you come up in that resurrection, you will not be able to sin no more. And that is when you are truly going to be a child of God. Mm-hmm. Just the way, same way Jesus came. Now, this will be last right here. Luke 20 and 34. Luke 20 and 34. 20 and 34. When you get there, Brother Ben and I, go ahead and read. And Jesus answering said unto them, the children of this world marry and are given in marriage, uh -huh. but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die anymore. Uh, so you can't die no more. Death is swallowed up mm -hmm. after the resurrection. Go ahead and read. For they are equal to the angels. They are equal mm -hmm. to, they are spiritual beings. Go ahead and read. And are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. So what are they? The children of God being the children of the resurrection. So there you have it, sisters and brothers, children of God, natural to spiritual. And I hope you learned something from this lesson.